Um, first, I'm going to just start off by saying fascism, a way of organizing a society in which a government ruled by a dictator controls the lives of the people and in which people are not allowed to disagree with the government. To bring it closer to this bill, we could say fascism, Minnesota style, is a way of organizing school children in which a school district is ruled by special interest groups such as the LGBT groups and the Minnesota Democrats in which school children and parents are not allowed to disagree with the special interests such as LGBT groups and the Minnesota Democrats. HF 826, another bill to fix a problem that all of us have experienced. Every one of us in this room is against bullying, and every one of us at some point in time in our life when we were growing up were bullied. I remember lots of times growing up being bullied, especially on the school bus. And there's this one kid, Jeremy, who used to spit boogers in my hair as he was exiting the school bus. Exactly, you. Um, let's see here. Also called a nerd lots of times growing up. I got teased because I didn't wear the cool clothes and that I read too much. My siblings were also bullied and teased, but my parents would contact the parents of the other children and have a conversation with those parents. When I was growing up, responsibility was placed on the parents of those children. As you all know in this body, I used to do childcare. And my child at the time, he was 18 months, he started biting. I've shared this story before, but I'll share it again. He started biting, and as a childcare provider, biting is never good for business. And there was a lot of pushing going on, and toddlers, I had quite a few toddlers, and they'd hit each other. And so I came up with a motto for my childcare. My business name, name was Mary Little Lambs, M-E-R-R-Y, Little Lambs. And the motto was, we practice kindness. And so every time that there was an incident, I called it bullying right away. And I would sit down the children and I would say, or, or actually I would ask them, what do we practice? And they would respond, kindness. And we would go over the um, incident that had happened, whether it be hitting or pinching or not even, or maybe it was just saying something that wasn't very kind. And um, we would talk about how that behavior was not practicing kindness. My son, at the very last day of his kindergarten, I, I went to have lunch with him. And one of the special ed teachers came up to me to talk to me to, uh, basically asked me what I was doing at the school and I said well I'm gonna have lunch with Carl and he said well Carl who and I said Carl Franson and he said wow Mary I didn't realize I didn't put two and two together that Carl was your son but I have to tell you that your son is one of the kindest kids in this school he shows other children on how to treat those who have special disabilities and as the mother of this child who is ending kindergarten, I got tears in my eyes knowing that my son was a role model to other children. Maybe it had something to do with that model being instilled with him when he was so young of we practice kindness. My daughter, my first term here, that very first year, my daughter was having an issue with school. And she was, oh gosh, I think eighth grade at the time. Eight, nine, eight, nine, ten, or seventh grade, one of the two grades. And she was having problems not wanting to go to school. And I asked her what was going on. And she wouldn't tell me. And I said, well, are you being bullied? She goes, mom, there's just a lot of drama. Girls have drama, and she wouldn't talk about it. And I had heard reports that maybe she wasn't being very nice in school either. So I told her I was going to get to the bottom of it, and I was going to go to school. And I was going to go to each and every one of her classes, and I was going to evaluate 
and pay attention to the attitudes that was being held in those classrooms. Well, my daughter in middle school did not think it would be very cool to have her mother attending class with her, and she uh, threw a fit. She informed the school counselor that her mom was going to be going to school, and the counselor had called me and said, you know, your daughter is very upset. She's upset that you're going to come to school and embarrass her. And I said, you bet I am. If I do not get to the bottom of who is bullying who and who's not being nice to who, I am going to go to school with her. Needless to say, that got back to my daughter. And I never heard another incident of quote unquote drama happening. This year, my, my youngest son is in first grade. Now, uh, my boys are going to a private school. And uh, the teacher has been having trouble with the first graders being nice to each other. And my youngest, he's very sensitive, so anytime somebody raises their voice, he thinks they're yelling. And anytime somebody looks at him funny, he thinks they're not being very nice. And on a particular day, the teacher had sent out an email to all of us parents, and she was very frustrated, and she called it bullying. She said, there's a lot of bullying going on in the classroom. And um, I'm, I'm very frustrated, and she asked for the parents for help and wanted to know how uh, she could best address this in the classroom if us parents had ideas. And A little while later, she uh, emailed us back with an exercise that she had the children do. And she had the children take a piece of paper that was perfectly flat, no wrinkles on it. And she had asked those children to take that paper in their hands and wrinkle it up. So they crumpled up that paper, and then afterwards, after it was all crumpled up in this ball, the children had to lay out that piece of paper and iron it out with their hands. And the teacher said that um, when, you, when, you crumple, when you crumpled up that paper, that was um, people being mean, doing not such nice things to you, saying mean things. And when you lay that paper down and you iron it out with your hand, that is when you're saying sorry. But even though you've done that and you ironed it all out, those wrinkles are still there because words hurt and actions hurt. And that stuck with those kids. And this is a couple of weeks ago, and I still talk about it with my little first grader, about that exercise, that very powerful exercise that teacher did in her classroom. When I ran for office, I made a promise that I would never vote for a bill that would negatively affect my children or my grandma Donna or my grandma Grace. And if any of you have ever met my grandma Donna, I know Represent Representative Detmer knows my grandma. Um, she's, not one per she's not a person that I'd want to take a bad vote on because I would hear it uh, until the day that um, until the day I, well, forever I would hear it. Anyway, this bill, HF 826, is dangerous for my children and all their friends. And for you at home watching, this bill is dangerous for your children or your grandchildren, your nieces or your nephews, and all their friends. From this mom to the moms at home, if you don't stand for something, you will fall for anything. And that's why I'm standing up here speaking out against this bill. Representative Beard mentioned those that had spoken up against um, issues that were harassed. Uh, the Chick-fil-A Chief Operating Officer, Dan Cathy, made a public comment in June 2012 opposing same-sex marriage, and bam. The LGBT rights activists went crazy and called for pro protests and boycotts of the chain. Duck Dynasty, Phil, he made a comment about marriage, and he was harassed, and he was temporarily suspended from the television show Duck Dynasty. In February 2014, an, a coach in Ohio was rejected from being 
a coach because he was a poor role model for young people because of his vocal opposition to same-sex marriage. Outside organizations such as Change.org and Equality Ohio pushed hard to bully the school board in rejecting, administ uh, in rejecting the administration's uh, request for him to be a coach. In 2008, Brandon Ike donated $1,000 to Proposition 8, and somehow recently that donation became public. As a result, the LGBT lobby went crazy, and bam, Mr. Ike was forced out of his job as CEO of Mozilla Firefox, a company that he co-founded. Why am I bringing these situations up? What could these stories have anything to do with HF 826? Well, parents, it is my opinion that if your children do not conform to the society's beliefs and of to the LGBT community, that your child may not be able to participate in after-school activities. They may end up being benched, unable to play sports, possibly not get into college, because of this, the beliefs that your children and you hold as a family. HF 826 is simply another attack on the Bible and conservative Christians. Now, if Representative Danvney would yield to a question, please. He will yield. Representative Franson. Representative Daf um, Davney. You've heard my comments, and another concern that I have with this bill is that we are creating a bubble wrap society for our children, meaning we don't want our children to experience anything negative. We don't want them to experience any mean words. We don't want them to experiencing anything that they may feel that is harmful to them. Representative Daphne, my question to you is, what will the kids do under HF 826 when real life happens? Representative Davney. Madam Speaker, uh, Representative Franz, and there's a whole lot of real life out there. What we want to do through House File 826, through caring parents, teachers, and others uh, in their lives, is to prepare them with tools and skills that will allow them to interact with the increasingly diverse society that Minnesota has become in the last 10 or 20 or 30 years, because that's the workplace that they're going to be working in, one that's, that's richer in its diversity than the ones that we grew up in. We're providing them tools for real life. Rep Representative Franson. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and uh, Representative Davney, thank you for that answer. So HF 826 is a bill to indoctrinate our children so that they may experience real life with however it is that Minnesota Democrats think it will be and how the LGBT community wants it to be. Thank you.